Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month I've got out my cheap little Plex server here. And we're going to experiment with a new feature of the hardware transcoder that allows you to transcode video now with HEVC for better efficiency and better quality. And we'll look at how easy this is to set up here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see how we can bump up the compression quality on our Plex server here. Now, in the video description, you'll find a link to a support document on the Plex website that details hardware transcoding in general, in addition to what you need to get this new feature of hardware transcoding to work on your particular device. Now, I have covered hardware transcoding extensively on this channel, so also in the video description, you'll find my master playlist of Plex videos that I've done in the past, and there you can get a breakdown as to what hardware transcoding is all about. Now, in this video, we're going to focus specifically on getting this HEVC encoding feature to work on Intel hardware. It should also work on devices that have an NVIDIA GPU on board, but the Intel component can get a little tricky, so that's where we're going to focus ourselves on today. And where it gets tricky is on the compatibility side. So for the HEVC encoding to work, you need a seventh generation Intel i3, i5, or i7 processor. If you're using lower end hardware, you need something running with Jasper Lake or better. And if you want a list of Jasper Lake processors, I can put a link to that also in the video description to this Wikipedia page that will give you all of the different chips that will be compatible with this HEVC encoding. Now, of course, if you are getting processors in your devices newer than Jasper Lake or the seventh generation chips, you should be fine. So as you can see here, Jasper Lake is right in this column and HEVC encoding is supported in the QuickSync architecture. Of note though, some of the older chips even though they support HEVC encoding, may not work. So Plex is recommending Jasper Lake or Greater to get this done. And our little low-cost PC here is running with an Intel N150, uh, which is of the newer generation of Alder Lake chips. So this should work just fine with this particular feature. Now, there are devices like my NAS in the closet over there that can do hardware transcoding, but do not support the HEVC output because their Intel chips are too old. So just having something that's hardware transcoding compatible doesn't mean that all of the features of hardware transcoding like this one will work. And because my machine in there can't support all the latest features of hardware transcoding, we will be upgrading it soon to something else. And we'll be doing a video on that in the next couple of days, so stay tuned. So let's see now how we can get hardware transcoding configured now on this mini PC. Now this PC is running Linux, but this will be a similar process on other platforms. And what you need to do is go into your settings on your Plex web interface, go over to transcoder for the server that you're working on, and just click on enable HEVC video encoding experimental and click on save changes here. You also want to make sure, of course, that hardware acceleration is enabled. So we'll click Save. And when I do that, you'll also see that a new option appears here about HEVC optimization. Plex does have a feature where you can have the Plex server pre-optimize the videos and save them on your hard drive. So if you have a machine that's not all that fast, you can basically pre-transcode the video and have them sitting in storage so you can just send them as a direct play when somebody connects to your system and needs a lower bandwidth video, for example. And of course, using HEVC to do that will result in less disk space needed to save those optimized versions. You don't have to enable this. I don't use this feature, but you can enable it just in case you ever decide to use it in the future. And once you click Save Changes here, you're ready to go. So what I've got loaded up on this right now is a Blu-ray movie that is encoded not only at 4K, but also with HDR. Now, right now I've got the movie direct playing over to my laptop at 4K, but what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and select a lower bit rate here. So we're going to do uh, 720p at two megabits per second, and that'll take a second for the server to respond and start transcoding. 
and I'll leave it here so you can see how long it takes for things to spin up, but it looks like we are pretty much ready to go here. Now, unfortunately, due to the copyright, I can't show you what this looks like, but I was very impressed with the quality of the video coming off of this quick sync conversion, especially at the bit rate that it's at. Now, if we jump over to the dashboard on this computer, you can see that we are decoding the video in hardware, and we are transcoding it back out using hardware, and we are encoding that output in HEVC quality here because it's telling us that it is. And if I were to uncheck this feature, it would revert back to H.264. So all is good. We are transcoding out at HEVC. It looks great. We're also doing tone mapping here as well. We talked about that in a prior video. And on Linux, these little Intel chips do a great job, not only with hardware transcoding, but also the tone mapping from HDR to SDR. Now if we scroll down here, you can see that my CPU usage isn't too bad here. We're hovering around 25 to 36 percent or so, and I was testing this earlier, and it was relatively the same as my H.264 output here. So I didn't see a very big difference in load on this processor uh, with HEVC versus H.264. I could probably get another three or four streams running on this chip without sacrificing performance here. And if you have a more powerful Intel chip, of course, you'll do a lot better. So all in, there doesn't seem to be much of a downside here to enabling this feature, at least on a modern Intel processor, even the cheap ones, and you'll get much better quality at a lower bit rate. Now, if you don't see your server outputting HEVC after you enable the settings, take a look at what the client is doing. So for example, on Apple and Android devices, and I'm assuming this includes Apple TVs and Android TV based uh, set top boxes, if you have it set to automatic quality adjustment, it will default to H.264. So you have to dial in the exact resolution and bit rate that you're looking for to trigger the HEVC transcode on those devices. Additionally, if you're using a web browser like we just were, you need to use a Chrome-based browser on Mac OS or Windows or Safari on Mac OS. So Firefox, Opera, and other browsers that are not Safari or Chrome will not work. Additionally, it also doesn't work on Xbox One S. But you don't have to turn the feature off. It'll just default back to H.264 on unsupported devices. So I don't really see any reason not to enable this feature. You will get much better video quality on your transcodes, and it'll again default back to H.264 for clients that don't support it. And as you saw, we're not using all that much CPU power here to do these transcodes, and this little N150 here was doing just fine keeping up with all of that transcoding. So give it a try. Let me know what you thought in the comments section. And again, I'll provide links to all of the relevant documentation in the video description. That'll do it for this one. I want to thank Plex for their ongoing support of the channel, and I want to thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.